So today we are doing this tool called Becca. It's um, basically used to analyze, um, classify, and further. If you know, you basically have a lot um, of records in a database uh, with multiple attributes. Uh, Becca is very useful in um, the analytics, and um, basically it does have your training and knowledge together set up, and can help analyze better uh, without much uh, this thing like all the programs are actually preset so you don't have to worry much uh, everything is taken care of by the tool uh, for machine learning also like this basically um, can you know uh, help you kind of with the test set the training set and everything so Weka has explorer experimenter knowledge flow workbench and a simple CLI that is your command line interface but we're using the explorer because it has um, everything set up experimenter will do more of M ML stuff so uh, the explorer looks like this and in this case we um, basically uh, we will open the file so now uh, we'll open a training set that we want to uh, you know this that the training set is already uh, available so uh, now we did this uh, training set uh, so these ARFF files are actually available online. Uh, there are some CSV to ARFF converters also, which are uh, online, which you can use. But uh, in Weka, uh, CSV and ARFF files are equally taken, but our files are uh, more, uh, you know, uh, like easier with working with Weka because uh, basically it tells you everything about uh, what the, uh, you know, the, the, the attributes are where the data starts and so it's basically Veka has everything ready uh, in case of ARF files so this is the um, all the uh, protocols and everything that we got here the attributes are uh, like shown so if you see the uh, if you see the where is it see the ARF file you will see that uh, it basically tells you the relation is like that it's a uh, KDD train percent to its set okay and then it tells all the attributes and these are all in the form of attribute attributes so basically specifying to back out what the attributes are uh, then further down below your um, the record where is it scrolling is such a difficult task uh, the data is so where the data begins is highlighted yeah like if you can see so this is here where the data begins and yeah so each attribute has uh, the data is so where the data begins is highlighted yeah like if you can see so this is here where the data begins and yeah so each attribute has one um, uh, comma down there it's 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 right there so yeah where were we yes so now uh, in certain cases you might want to normalize an attribute or two uh, before actually classifying it that kind of increases the efficiency of the classification algorithm that you are going to uh, take up so uh, here the label in the training set was so in the training sets basically you know what was a normal traffic and what was an anomaly okay so um, uh, the, the count here is a little disturbed but uh, in this training set most of the uh, labels were counted as a normal uh, count which will later get classified into an anomaly once we classify it as per the test set or if it's cross-validation whatever you want to do so we look that up um, yeah so now in this case I wanted to uh, normalize the protocol type and the flag uh, that is obtained uh, as part of the train set so yes uh, so all these attributes uh, you know these basically security attributes that uh, contribute to one or more types of attacks whether you were doing a uh, so, so any sort of set can be taken but I'm using a security one because that is what I know <laughs> and um, so there are supervised um, 
filters and classifications and uh, you know all filters are possible on the uh, data set then there are also unsupervised ones uh, so in the the normalized thing comes in under unsupervised attributes so I'm normalizing the A's and I apply the filter so here I want the scale and transition to be 1 and 0 so everything is fine I'm going with the um, default setting and then obviously apply the filter not a task <clears throat> okay uh, so then once we've normalized it uh, it is now ready for classification uh, yeah the class is fine okay so now we go on to classify it now what we can do in classification is we could use um, cross validation so it basically falls on the current set and validates it within itself to get uh, in different 10 different folds so these folds basically here are threads uh, yeah and then they can uh, you know uh, classify it within the data that's already available within the uh, training set so you can also have a supplied test set so the test set is basically uh, you have already classified which is a normal thing in modern normally is so i took a available kdd test set so this is available on github so if you want to get these uh, databases you can just grab it from there and uh, so you took the supply test set and these are your classify evaluation options so you want the output and uh, confusion matrix. So what all do you want to see in the output is basically what's here. Uh, so for most of the things, if you are working a firm and you want definitely a cost sensitive evaluation done for the data, because uh, after all, if when you're pressing it to the business, uh, business will obviously want to see that. I mean, they, they will not uh, ignore this part. Uh, if you know you're actually trying to provide security for the uh, things that you are reporting here, so uh, this is the class. So the class is what um, uh, test setting against uh, with the training set. So now for the classifier. So there are many classifiers available within Weka. So there's this uh, base. That's your knife base theorem and um, classifier. Your functions. Are, so your um, multilayer perceptron and logistics are the most famous uh, functions uh, then lazy you have your um, instance based learning it's basically like uh, instance based learning is basically your every uh, KNN classifier like so you get the most uh, 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 nearest neighbors uh, with the you know one that you're the point of contraction that you're talking about and then determine whether it is a normal or an anomaly so now in this case, we this is the filters for IBK, but we want to um, dive in a little bit more and we want to, uh, rather than just taking one neighbor in different times, you will see you can increase the efficiency by, uh, you know, however number of nearest neighbors you're taking. So since this is the K nearest neighbors classifier, so the KNN is at the moment one. So we are taking one neighbor into consideration at the moment. And... Um, yeah, so KNN is 1 here. It's a bad size. In class R little, we are definitely going to keep false because we do not want it to interrupt with the training set. Otherwise, your value of anomalies and normal incidents don't really change. So keeping that false. And uh, we are keeping a linear search, but the distance measurement of between the two neighbors can be changed. So, oh no, it's not here. It's... Um, below in the choose yeah so you can have a euclidean distance or a manhattan distance or uh filters distance so manhattan and euclidean are the most uh popular ones but for this one we are taking since it's uh, uh projectile data so we will take euclidean distance itself mm -hmm. yeah that's fine okay and um 
so we'll change the KNNs later to increase the efficiency. So let's just try first with the KNN one, and then we can tell you what goes on. So now we took the supply test set and we're starting the this thing set builds a model and starts evaluating the test data. This takes a little time, so I'm just showing it fast in the video because. So yeah, so this is how your output looks like. Uh, it'll basically give you a summary of what's uh, gone on and how many tests were done. And since we allowed a cost matrix evaluation, it does give you um, how much cost it would take to you know basically uh, deal with each uh, record that um, comes up as a true or a false positive. So the confusion matrix is basically a final output, so like how many were normal and how many were abnormal. Uh, that's what it says here. <clears throat> uh, so the true positive rate and the false positive rate, uh, I'm sure you know, like out of how many possible um, positives are you getting the true positives and uh, the precision and the recall. So these are all based on uh, the availability. And the ROC area here shown is right. If you notice this right now, it's 0.493. So the greater towards one the ROC area is, that is 0.99, you can, it goes up to like 0.9. The greater the ROC area towards one, uh, more efficient the classification has happened. So that means your cost matrix should also uh, be higher. So a lot of people in business, they usually accommodate for something in between. So now we change the KNN into 31, and we're going to start again. So now, like I said, we are having the cost-sensitive evaluation matrix. So here, what you can do is you can put up the matrix, like how much for a normal um, record and how much for a possible anomaly record that you want to find out. Uh, you can just edit the matrix here. Uh, so for this, uh, you need to, the matrix has to be in a coarsed format. Did I just create a new folder? Oh my god, I do this. Okay, so in part two, we have the cost matrix. So it's a dot cost. Uh, so you can uh, create it in a CSV, but just you have to save it in a dot cost file, uh, which you can just import here. Okay, and right now I'm keeping this, but you can uh, take the cost matrix as given uh, and supplied by your firm or by the business. And like I said, so now we are going with a higher. So KNN, you want to use prime and odd numbers because since otherwise, if it's an even number, the neighbor thing does not really work. Uh, so try with that. And this is the result. Do you see that the normals have now reduced? And so has the ROC area, right? It has increased. So, so we wanted more towards one, like I said that the more towards one, the uh, better the classification. So like I said, the business would definitely want something in between because they do want to invest too less and suffer and they do not want to invest too much because anything which is close to 0.9 would be uh, quite high uh, for starters. So this is how it works.